Greetings, this is Tanner from GameTextures.com. Today we're going to be doing a quick little tutorial on how to set up a GT material inside of Redshift for Maya. So, for those of you who don't know, Redshift is an extremely powerful GPU-based render engine. Uh, it doesn't have a standalone version, but it does have a plugin for Maya 3D Studio Max and a few other softwares. You can learn more at Redshift3D.com. So yeah, let's just jump right into it here. So you can see that I have a very simple scene set up with just a little sphere. First thing we need to do is assign a redshift material to that sphere. So I'm going to come in here and assign a new material. Type redshift material. Select redshift material. And there we go. We have our sphere assigned. Close this out. And jump straight to Hypershade. We're going to do most of our setup right here inside of Hypershade. Once Hypershade is open, let's find that Redshift material we just created and right click it and click Graph Network. Inside of that material, you can see that this, this node is extremely complicated. It has so, so many toggles and so many features, but we're just going to be using a few very basic ones for this purpose. So let's get started. So the first thing we need to do is make sure we have our material node selected. We're going to go to Diffuse. Load a file. Inside of that file, we're going to plug in our base color map. So this is very important. Redshift uses the PBR metallic rendering system, which means that from gametextures.com, you need to download the PBR metallic version of our file, or you need to download the substance file and export the individual PBR metallic maps from Substance Player or Substance Painter or Substance Designer, any Substance product. So, since we're using Metalness, we're going to go ahead and select the base color map. We need to take a second look here and make sure that our color space is set directly to sRGB. This is very important. Part two, we're going to install our roughness map. So, roughness map. Go down to the reflection section, we have color, weight, roughness. Let's plug in a file to roughness. Inside of that color space node, we want this to be raw. Roughness needs to be raw. Actually, everything that isn't the base color needs to be set to color space raw. Very important, otherwise this is going to not look good. Here. Part three, we're going to set up our metalness map. So since this is just a ground material, we can do a few things. We can come in and set metalness to, uh, we need to set the Fresnel type to metalness, and then we can set metalness to zero, or we can plug in our metalness texture. It doesn't really matter for this material, but if you are using a metallic or a plastic or something that has uh, several different types of material in it, this will be very important. So select our metalness map, color space is raw. And for the final part of this material, uh, or at least the stage of it, we're going to plug in our normal map. So scroll all the way down to the overall section. In our bump map, we're going to type redshift normal map. We need to use the redshift normal map node, otherwise this will not work properly. So select redshift normal map, and let's plug in the normal map from our file. All right. So that should get us a pretty good starting point for our texture. Let's see. Nice. So now that we have our normal map set up, let's come in here and do a quick test render. We can see what we were working with. I always turn the sRGB gamma off because it's misleading. We want to see our, our image in raw to start because it's far more useful. All right. So yeah, this material is looking very sharp if I do say so myself. Yeah, lots of nice details in it. Those beads and the blocks and stuff. I'm pretty happy with the lighting of it. So the, the next thing that we're going to do is set up a height map and some tessellation and some placement. To do that, we need to select our object. We need to hit Control A and go to our uh, surface shape. We need to scroll all the way down to Redshift. I already have it open, but you need to open this. Click Redshift. Enable tessellation and enable displacement, and then you can close. Go right back to hypershade. 
Inside of Hypershade, uh, select our uh, shader group. Go to Displacement Material. We're going to search for uh, Redshift Displacement. Redshift Displacement. Select it. Plug it in. Make sure Height Field is selected. It's the default. And let's add our Height Map file. Make sure we set the color space to raw. Test renders. Super blown out the displacement. The setting is just way too high. So fix that. We need to remap the values of our height map. Let's go back to Hypershade. Select our displacement node, a redshift displacement node, and let's remap it. So this is right now going from zero to one. These are just my units. I think I have it set to centimeters right now. No, meters right now. So I need to turn it down so that it's not displacing so far. So I'm gonna set it down to like 0 0.018, something like that. It's gonna be different for every single material and every single scene. So you're gonna wanna experiment with this as much as you can. And Make sure you test it. So yeah, I had my IPR window already open so you can see that it's already looking much better. You can see how much our nice stumps and our rocks are displacing out of the sphere. Still might be a little high. Go back to Hypershade and map the range to about one, three, something like that. Find that with, with displacement, subtlety is best. Yeah, really nice. So that's pretty much it. That's how you set up a game textures material inside of Redshift and get a really nice little render out of it. So as I didn't mention before, this is the first time I've created one of these videos and I'm really curious for your feedback. So please hit the comments below if you have any feedback, if you just have kudos, if you have comments, questions, concerns, we'll be happy to answer those. We'll be monitoring the comments. So yeah, thanks for watching and happy texturing.